We're back in Vegas. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of the HP Gen 8 announcement. Uh, as I say, we're here in Vegas. Big news today. Uh, but we've got a little storage drill down segment. We're going to talk about storage. We're going to talk about the channel. And we've got two great guests to do that. Uh, the people who are really fundamental to that business. Uh, we've got Chris Riley, who's the Vice President of Enterprise Storage Sales in the Americas. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Dave. Good to have you on the Cube, first time Cuber. And uh, Tom Joyce, who has been on the Cube before in Marlboro. Tom Joyce is the uh, Vice President of Marketing Strategy and Operations at HP Storage. Tom, welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be here. Good to see you guys. So, Tom, um, we were talking off camera. It's been uh, two years now since uh, you joined HP Storage. Yep. Right? That's you joined right. HP in 09, but two years on the storage side. So, back, think back then you know, and, and how different it is now. Take us through sort of what's changed in the last couple of years. You know, it's been I, busy. I think we talked to you, you guys just around the time that we were starting this uh, this journey, and it's it, it's been it's been an interesting ride. I mean, uh, coming into HP, we had a very uh, strong profile in storage over many many years. We've got customers all over the world and a tremendous amount of resources, but we kind of lost our way a little bit and uh, knew we needed to get it back on track. And, you know, to do that requires us to get a lot of things right. Um, and the first, you know, stop was really to look at the, the storage portfolio itself. And, you know, we got rid of a lot of things that were kind of holding us back and got focused on the right things. And I think, at, you know, at this point, you know, we're, we believe we've got the best portfolio of new technologies in storage. Uh, you know, clearly 3PAR was a big bet. You know, that's uh, a little over a year since we uh, brought that online in terms of selling, um, selling 3PAR. Uh, we've got, you know, factories all over the world now. We've got a, a massive amount of growth. We've got channel partners coming online. I think we've grown the uh, total number of channel partners that uh, we have actively selling that have taken orders on 3PAR by about 500%. Uh, you know, so it's going in the right direction. I would say that there is a tremendous amount of excitement in the business right now. Um, you know, I just came back from a, a meeting last week with um, our ambassadors, which are our top pre-sales people uh, from all over the world, and, you know, it was, it was like night and day. They're really excited about the technology that we have. We can do a lot more things, and frankly, you know, we're just getting design wins every time we, we show up and, and tell the three-part story, so it's a pretty exciting place to be right now. Excellent. Well, um, Chris, they've, they've dubbed 2012 the year of the channel, and, uh, and I... I wonder if you could confirm that it really is going to be the year of the channel. Maybe talk about the Always the leery of the word dub, but yes, indeed, <laughs> uh, 2012 is the, is the year of the channel. And, and we're speaking specifically for the Americas. I, I look across you know, the globe and I see how uh, the rest of HP operates uh, in EMEA and APJ, and the, their channel model is incredibly strong. And, and we are really looking to bring that strength of channel go-to-market into the Americas go-to-market plan. So. We've, uh, can I talk about what we've announced today? So we've announced today that 100% that of all new logos across the entire HP portfolio will be going through the channel. It's probably the most profound um, commitment to the channel that any storage company has made. And in addition to that, we've also announced that two of our key product portfolios, uh, the P4000, which is the left-hand portfolio, as well as the D2D platform, which was developed in internally in HP Labs, will also be going through the channel. So, when you say new logos, can you just talk about what you mean by a, what's a new logo? What so a new logo that? is any account that hasn't done business with HP Storage in the past. So, not a new logo to HP, and the beauty of this program is it really helps promote HP on HP. So, the strength in our server portfolio, and certainly Gen 8, I think is going to create a lot of new conversation uh, and a lot of architecture redesign discussions. And we want to make sure that, that HP Storage is front and center in those discussions. So if I'm a if, if I'm a channel participant, I get a there's a big pharmaceutical company does business with HP servers, but they don't buy any HP storage. Any HP storage that goes into account goes through the channel? Hundred percent. So we're looking for in those situations the most qualified, you know, storage authorized partner to be able to work with um, that has the technical capability and acumen. Uh, and the kind of business model that could really support an effort like that. So can you guys drill down a little bit more on, on specifically what kind of qualifications you're looking for in the channel? Well, you know, I think what we're looking for is, is, is two things. First off, we're looking for our partners to come on and get educated about the products that we have. And we've got a whole line of certifications. We just rolled out an SMB certification for, you know, partners that have never done business with us. And a lot of those products that you just mentioned are specifically designed to uh, serve the needs of, 
uh, small and medium businesses. And you can kind of start there and then grow the capabilities to the point where you can you know, do the full enterprise uh, portfolio. So, so it kind of goes from very simple uh, to uh, very sophisticated. And we've also uh, launched a number of programs for how we can you know, help customers actually take the service portion of the business and, and provide break fix services and professional services. So kind of it's, it's a question of where, how far you want to go. Um, we're helping customers uh, to work with our channel partners in a, in, to a greater extent than whatever we, we have before. Um, you know, we want channel partners to come to HP and say, look, this is a company we want to line up with. You know, we're going to make an investment in HP. And you know, what Chris's team is doing in the Americas is saying, if you make that investment, we're going to guarantee that these new accounts are going to go to you and these products are going to go to you. You can build a business here. You can count on that revenue stream. You can count on us to help you get there. So I want to come back to the services in a minute, but I really want to understand this announcement. It's a pretty big commitment that you guys are making, 100%. I think means 100%, I mean, I, think I get that. Yep. Um, what, what percent of the business roughly today of, for HP Storage goes through the channel? Yeah, I don't think that's a, um, that's a number that we historically have broken down kind oh, okay. of at the region level. Uh, but, you know, as Chris said, in, the, uh, in many parts of the world, you know, HP's been doing channel for a very, very long time. I mean, they've been in China and many parts of the Far East in, uh, for, for a much longer time than other, anybody else in the industry has been. Uh, so we have very high rates of uh, channel sell through over there, uh, less so in the Americas. In the Americas, we've been very direct touch, uh, and for a lot of these products, you know, and customers, that's what was required in the past. And what we're seeing now is that you know the the breadth and depth of the channel, the resources that they have, have grown to the point where you know those are partners that can do a lot more than they could do ten or you know ten or five years ago. And so we're asking them. You know, to come over to HP. You know, we want to take partners that are not happy doing what they're doing somewhere else, not happy with the economics, and come here and sell these new products that we got. So there's kind of a big land grab going on in the channel right now, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of acquisitions, right? I mean, you guys made some acquisitions, Dell made some acquisitions, EMC made some acquisitions, and, and so a lot of the guys that were, you know, selling almost exclusively through the channel got bought up by companies that had a mix, or in some cases, you know, were 100% direct. So what's going on in the, in, the ch in the channel? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, so the portfolios are broad. As you look at converged infrastructure and selling the entire stack, it, it becomes a more prevalent sale, and the conversation is, is much more around that. The, the channel partner today has to be more sophisticated in its, its uh, domain expertise. You can't be a server-only, storage-only, network-only partner because you're going to miss out on some of the key value propositions that are associated with the converged infrastructure. So for us, we view the channel as a journey. And, and that journey starts with a commitment like the one we've made, and then the opportunity to sell with the channel partner. So while certifications and authorizations are important, and oftentimes a leading indicator of success, we know that you know it may take someone who's very proficient in networking or server to become proficient in storage. And, and our commitment to the channel is not you know, you take this business and, and HP will continue to take uh, this direct business over here. We have field sales reps, and by definition, that's a sales rep who's responsible for territory and driving the business within that territory. And, and a key component of that is driving that business in a sell with sales motion, using our SA support and technical support and consulting expertise to help mount a successful campaign. How big is the contract for this 100% channel initiative that you guys are when you're signing somebody up. It was like 100 pages? <laughs> no, it really isn't. It's a one-pager. <laughs> it's a one-pager, really, anything, for real. Anything <laughs> harder than that is, is really probably doesn't have a lot of teeth as it gets down to the street level. No, this is very simple. I mean, they're, they're, you're kind of poking around looking for what are the restrictions. Yeah, what am I missing the reality here? reality is here's <laughs> the deal. We want people to come on board. And, you know, what's in it for them? I mean, as, as Chris just said and as you just said, it's gotten complicated for channel partners. If you're in the Chicago market and you're a medium-sized bar, there's probably 50 or more other medium-sized bars selling storage in the Chicago market. So you've got to pick who you're going to line up with. And most of these folks come to us and say, look, we want predictable and we want trustable. And I think in the past, we've probably been less predictable than, than we would like to be. So we're trying to make this as absolutely crystal clear as possible. If you, you, know, if you find an opportunity you know, for a net new account, we're going to line up with you. And you can guarantee that you're going to have that business and all the net new accounts you bring on board. And, yeah. and that's a, it's a very simple thing. You don't need 50 pages or 100 pages to sum that up. Yeah, the channel doesn't like to get head faked. And they've been head faked, let's face it, in this industry in the past, right? Yes. A vendor comes in and says, oh, we love the channel. And all of a sudden, two years later, rug gets pulled out from underneath. So, uh, so what do you tell the channel? Who's, do they ask you? They say, all right, what do, 
what am I missing here? Like I'm saying, I'm a skeptic. How, how do I know you're not going to pull the rug out from underneath me in, in six months after I, you know, let you into all my accounts? What do you tell that guy? Yeah, so we, we've, we've, uh, we've done our due diligence here, and, and we've spent time with the five distributors we use here in the Americas, uh, and vetted this, this whole process and this approach. Um, and, we, and we really went through the kind of detail you need to, to cover when you, when you have a campaign like this. In addition, we have the good fortune to have a, a very strong enterprise advisory council. So EPAC is what we call it. They're here this week with us, but they provide us advice and counsel throughout the year. So we vetted this with them as well. We wanted to know, you know what the frequently asked questions might be. You know, how about the field engagement? W what about a deal that was priced before and you know, might move to an indirect motion moving forward? So we, we've got those details worked out. Uh, I'd say over the next 30 days, it's going to be a concerted effort on both our parts to educate our collective teams. But at the end of this, we will come out as a stronger, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, field selling motion with our partner community, and and I think garnering the the lion's share of mind share, which is really difficult in this complex, you know, market we live in today. How will the certification for the channel participants differ from what you would? Uh, uh, provide to your own internal sales reps? Yeah, that's a very good question. We actually have a completely separate organization that just does channel training and certification. So when we bring a product out, uh, you know, in the, the scope of HP, I mean, you're talking about the largest mm -hmm. IT uh, company in the world, there's a lot of people that we have to go educate and train. So the core content that we might pr uh, create, you know, to provide technical training on a 3PAR or any of these new products that we're doing, has to go to our certification and learning group. It has to go to our sales L&D group, it has to go to our TS training group, it has to go to all those places around the world. So we actually start this process well in advance of, of, of bringing any new product out. Um, and you know, most of these channel partners that we're dealing with are familiar with different parts of that process. Um, and again, as I said earlier, it can kind of go from you know, very lightweight certifications, you know, things like if you're selling somebody else's product today, we can kind of fast track you through the process of getting up to speed mm -hmm. uh, on our, 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 our products. Um, and then you can actually make a much more significant investment. Uh, and I think, you know, again, for a, if, you, if you're a mid-sized bar in any one of these, uh, any one of these cities, you're, you're really looking at your balance sheet and trying to figure out how much of my people's time do I want to invest in training before I see a result. And so, as Chris said, a lot of this over the next couple of months is going out and showing them, you know, showing them that, you know, we did make this announcement and now we're doing these things to actually get you up to speed. And selling with them is a key part of that. Oh, you mentioned service, services before, so where does services fit into this whole equation? Yeah, so uh, services uh, is an interesting uh, phenomenon for all of us right now at HP. Uh, you, you might have noted that uh, a number of months ago, the company made the decision to combine our enterprise server storage networking business with our TS business. Mm. And those two things reported up separately before, and now they all report to one person, and that person is, is, uh, is our mutual boss, Dave Donatelli. Right. And that happened you know, six months or so ago. Um, and since then, we've started to see some significant changes in terms of how we approach this part of the, you know, the go-to-market. Um, we started a, a program called Service One about six months ago. Uh, and that gave us the ability to go from uh, just really selling, um, uh, having a, a channel partner go sell our products and resell our service and support with HP's brand on it, uh, to now being able to sell our products but sell our support but also do the break fix themselves. Uh, in that model, you know, it would have been HP branded support, but they would have had the opportunity to participate in the revenue and profitability from that. Uh, what we announced here uh, today was a third way to do business with us on service and support, and that's where they sell HP's product, but they can do all of the break fix and they can do professional services as well with their own brand, so it can be partner branded. Now, uh, why is that important? Um, if you're a channel partner, you want to be able to provide custom services to your, to your, to your, to your end customers. And you also want to propagate your own brand. You want to build your brand. Sure, you don't right. just want to be a pass-through for somebody else's stuff. And many of the larger partners in particular have been asking for this for a long time. Uh, many of the end customers have been asking for it too. I mean, they want to basically have custom offerings and they view that channel partner as their primary relationship. Um, now, I think that not everybody's going to do this. Uh, many of the channel partners are perfectly happy to resell our, our services and support, and they like having our 
our brand on it, but a lot of them want to do unique things and we're giving them the opportunity to do that. So again, this is a big commitment. Uh, it's certainly a commitment of dollars and resources on our part to make sure that you know, we can backstop their service and support with quality. It also means that we're giving up some profitability to those partners that want to do this. So if they lock in with us to go sell these products, they make the investment to build those services offerings, you know, they make, they make some significant money, uh, we get a very strong partnership out of it. So that's what the new Service One offering is. So about. make sure I understand. So there's three models, if I understand it. HP branded and HP delivered. Yep. Um, as a, I'm a pure reseller of, right. of, of your services, or as a hybrid, right? Right. A, yeah. HP branded, and I can deliver it as the, as the partner. That's correct. If yeah. I want. Or uh, this new model that you're announcing today is partner branded and, 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 and partner delivered. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, it'd be interesting to see how that, how that shakes up in the, in the channel, how the mix goes. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting because nobody else is doing that yeah. uh, in the market. Yeah, that's new. 100% um, channel commitment is kind of new. <laughs> no, it is new. It's, it's, uh, we, we exposed the team to this today, the, uh, the EPAC team this morning, gave them a pre-briefing, pre and there was a standing ovation. So uh, a few folks that represent multiple uh, storage providers you know, said this is the most profound uh, commitment to the channel they've ever seen. So it's not only new, but I think it, it's going to kind of allow us to capture the mind share that you know, we need to, to really grow our business and, and uh, grow our market. Well, I, well, the reason I like it is because, like I said, there's a land grab going on in the channel, and of course everybody's throwing MDF funds at the channel, and that's the sort of standard way you do it. But this is, really shows a different type of commitment, and it talks to profitability, which is what they really want. Right? And, and what Tom mentioned, predictability. Mm -hmm. So when a, when a channel partner engages in a, in a new logo pursuit, it, it's an expensive venture. Right. Right? And they want to make sure that when, when they really go to settle on a, an architecture they believe is right for that client, that they have a predictable model from the vendor. And, and that's why we've said, if you're going to make that commitment to go after new logos, we're going to commit to you that if you partner with HP, those go through you 100% of the time. What's, um, what's the channel telling you about the cloud, right? The cloud is scary, I would think, for a lot of the channel. But wow, I'm going to go to some service provider and buy all these services? I mean, I li if I'm a channel participant, I, I like to sell boxes and s hardware and software and services on top of that. What are, you, what are you seeing out there? What are they telling you? Do you want me to go first? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing, again, the channel is a diverse thing. There's all kinds of channel partners yeah. in the world, from the very small to very large. Some specialize in different areas. So, you know, we're seeing quite a few companies. Again, they've gotten more sophisticated over the last decade or mm -hmm. so, and they've had to to survive. So the ones that are doing well have a lot of resources. And, you know, many of them are actually doing cloud uh, cloud solutions of their own. Um, you know, some of them are providing private cloud solutions, and that's where our cloud system and virtual system offerings are doing quite well. Uh, some are actually building services or reselling somebody else's cloud services in, in various different combinations. And we actually have a program uh, that was actually pioneered at 3PAR, and we've made it a, an HP program called Cloud Agile. And Cloud Agile is a way for us to go work with channel partners and services partners to go to market uh, driving cloud solutions together. And, there, and again, there are all kinds of ways that that can be done. Um, I'd say the ones that are afraid of the cloud are the ones that uh, are probably going to have the hardest time you know, surviving over the long haul. The ones that are embracing it, whether it's SMB or enterprise or services, those ones are actually doing very well. So you think it's a real opportunity for the I channel? It's a huge opportunity. Right? Bring forth uh, uh, pre-sale services, consulting, maybe even security services yeah. all the way through the end. Absolutely. And we're, we're seeing scenarios now with, with cloud system, which has only been out for you know nine months or so, mm -hmm. uh, where we go in and we engage with a customer about orchestration or how they're going to manage their private cloud. Have that discussion. A lot of that is consulting-led, and it flows through for that channel partner to provide all kinds of back-end hardware opportunities. And we're seeing an increasing amount of 3PAR getting sold into those deals. And that's that's what the, cu the customer that wants. That's what the channel partner wants. They want to have a higher level conversation and, and become more important to the end customer. Now we're here at the Gen 8 announcement, uh, of course. Now we've been in the storage business, the three of us, for a long time now. And, um, You're longer it's, than us. It's, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> you know, a, little more, a few more gray hairs. And, uh, but you guys are in the front line, so you know it adds up. Um, the interesting thing about this announcement that I saw is one of the key pillars that HP is talking about is data growth. So now you hear the, the compute guys talking about the ripple effects um, of storage growth, 
you know, on their business. So what does Gen 8 mean to you guys from a storage perspective? Well, it means a number of things. I mean, since we kind of started this journey we've been talking about, about how we kind of re, uh, recast our product offerings, we made a couple of big bets. And one of the big bets was that we're going to go focus on converged infrastructure. Uh, and what we called that within the storage business was converged storage. And we basically said that going forward with all of the new products that we build, they're going to have kind of three things in common. And the first is they're going to be built on industry standard architecture. Architecture. You know, we happen to have ProLiant and Blade System who build, you know, controllers that can be used for a variety of things, including storage. And so we've got the best controllers in the world. So we're going to leverage that stuff. We're going to leverage all of the management capabilities that are inside them, which are very significant and, and actually grow uh, with uh, Gen 8 a great deal. And then we're going to focus our attention on building data services software. So what 3PAR is, what Left Hand is, what iBrix is, as well as Store Once Backup is data services run on top of industry standard architecture. So they take advantage of all the capabilities of HP. So if you look at Gen 8, what does Gen 8 bring us? Well, it brings us, I'm not going to go through all of the capabilities, but it brings us the most modern server technology in the world. Uh, it gives us a lot more capability in terms of power and cooling management and all of those things. And it gives us the ability to build modern uh, storage platforms to take advantage of that. We're not going to be like some of our competitors running on, they might be running on industry standard architecture, but they're two or three generations behind. Uh, we're not going to be running on proprietary architectures like some of our competitors. So it put, gives us a big leg up just starting out of the box. And so you will see over the course of the next couple of quarters a, a, a rolling thunder, I, I guess you call it, of, of product announcements of things we have today that are now available on Gen 8. So that's a huge opportunity. It gives us, uh, you know, frankly, more power you know, than we had yesterday. So your strategy is to layer storage services on top of these industry standard architectures right. and add value up the stack. And as you kind of move to a world that's about scale up instead of uh, scale out instead of scale mm -hmm. up, you know, that's that's where you want to be. You want to scale out with blades, you want to scale out with modular servers. You know, the days of the kind of two controller storage proprietary that, that's over, right? And so this gives us, uh, you know, gets us the place we want to go. All right, gentlemen, industry first, 100% channel initiative, bold moves by HP going after the channel hard. Uh, Chris Riley, Tom Joyce, thanks very much for coming inside the Cube. Appreciate you guys coming on. Transforming the market that we know and have led for over 22 years.